He soon was performing magic tricks to entertain. He made an apple disappear in front of Carly's eyes and pulled it out from behind her head. Cut perfectly in half. And we always said she was pretty sharp. Aha! He juggled kiwis, grapes, and even bananas. He laughed when his tricks received applause. Steve played along by throwing other small objects to try and distract Alistair. He eventually stopped when, having thrown an orange at Alistair, Alistair cut the orange casually and launched it back, smacking Steve in the forehead. Eventually, Alistair stopped doing tricks and merely listened to the others. A small smile hidden between a keen yet placid face. After, at a quarter to seven, Alistair got to his feet. My friends, I would like to make a toast to friends! Yeah, I loved that show too. I'd make a toast to that. Everyone echoed him and drank. After that, everyone seemed ready to leave for the dance. Alistair grabbed from a closet a deep green cloak, identical to the one he himself wore, placing it around Delilah's shoulders they tailed behind the party. Did you enjoy yourself? Alistair asked with wonder in his eyes. It was a great meal! Do you own this place? She nodded back at the house. It's just a place, to coin a phrase, to hang my hat. One of a few, he said, winking. The trip to the dance was little more subdued than the trip going to the Angel's Ascent. Small conversations were scattered among the group. Both Alistair and Delilah were silent, sitting side by side, Alistair's hand stroking Delilah's. As they exited the limo, Delilah stared up at the Capitol building where the dance was being held. The white dome gazed down across the valley of Salt Lake City as they entered the white followed. Resolving to a two-floor atrium constructed of white marble, two staircases led up the upper floor on either side of the hall. People were already on the dark dance floor, clustered together. Let's get some pictures done first, suggested Mitch. Everyone agreed and headed up to the stairs. The group picture was done first, then the singles. As Delilah focused on the camera while trying to smell genuinely, the lights suddenly came on. At the same time, men dressed in head to toe in black, including ski masks, appeared in the crowd with guns in hand. Oh, party crashers. One surfaced in the middle of the crowd and fired three shots in the air. The music stopped as screams and shouts erupted. People pulled away, girls grabbing their dates and holding them close for safety. All right, listen, listen up. up. The man in the center yelled. His voice was harsh and cold, a voice of pure callous. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to announce that you're all out past curfew. It's time for my men to take the ladies back. Men on the left, women on the right. Get moving! Masked men poured in from the entrance and began separating the couples at gunpoint. One man grabbed Carly and began dragging her. Brandon grabbed the man and attempted to rescue Carly. Man in charge grabbed Brandon and threw away. Brendan hit the marble floor and scrambled to his feet. The man pulled out a pistol. Time, Time to, to teach you some manners. manners! The gunshot echoed around the hall, harmonizing with the screams of both boys and girls as Brendan collapsed to the ground. Carly broke free and ran at the man. He barely turned before Carly's hand made contact with his face. Kapow! The man countered the blow by aiming the gun and firing at Carly. She fell to the floor next to Brandon, obviously. Many people were bawling fists, shouting abuse at the man. The man snapped his fingers. Men on the second floor leveled rifles at the crowd. We can do this the hard way, or my way, he bellowed. The division of couples continued with almost no resistance. Several couples still defend against the attack. Kinley was hauled off after Paul had been struck to the floor. Curtis shielded Emmeline before her captor whacked Curtis over the head with a butte of his rifle. Emmeline was dragged away while staring at Curtis's unconscious form, a trickle of blood flowing from under his blonde hair. Another attempted to separate Jenny and Steve. Before the man realized what happened, Steve had grabbed the man's wrist and threw him over his shoulder. The other two men grappled with Steve to incapacitate him as the first staggered to his feet. Steve jerked his arm wildly, knocking the man's name off target. The gun went off as Jenny fell to the floor, a large hole in her side. What you say, that you only meant well. Delilah and Alistair were still standing at the top of the staircase when Delilah's eyes fell on Chelsea. Mitch was standing next to her, ready to leap in front of her if she was threatened. Two men came towards them, figuring their rifles. All right, break it up. One grunted, grabbing Mitch's arm. Mitch and Chelsea both react at the same time. Mitch's arm grabbed the man while his leg kicked out hard. The man collapsed with a grunt, cupping himself. Chelsea's... 
and Chelsea's hand dove into her purse, producing a small bottle. The pepper spray hit the man full in the face. He yelled in pain, blinking back tears. He took aim at her while cursing under his breath. First of all, if you got hit in the face full on with mace, you're not aiming anything. You're on the ground screaming in agony. You're not pulling out a gun and trying to aim because you're blind.